In this video, we take a look at what's new in iOS 13.4 Beta 1. Now, this is interesting. If you own an older phone without a notch at the top, you'll notice that there is no status bar at the top of Control Center, and that's how it's been. But in iOS 13.4 Beta 1, this changes, presumably to unify all devices with the same look in Control Center. You see the status bar there, just like you'll see on a notch-based device like the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10R, the iPhone 11, and so on. One of the biggest new user-facing features in iOS 13.4 Beta 1 is the presence of nine new Memoji stickers. So let's look together and see what we find and try to identify these nine new stickers here. So I see three right off the bat, uh, the one with the steam coming out of the nose, which is right here. I'm guessing that's steam. What do you guys say? What is that? I don't know. All right, so we also have the one with the hearts, the three hearts. This is probably my favorite one. And then you have the little party Memoji. And again, these only apply to the Memoji characters, not the Animoji stickers. So just keep that in mind. You have the Home Alone. That's what I like to call the Home Alone. You have the one behind the laptop. That's definitely me right there. You have this one, this one, and finally this one. Actually, there's one more, this little guy right here, which looks like he's he's pretty fed up with whatever is going on at the moment. He doesn't want to hear it anymore. But again, this one's my favorite. Which one is your favorite new Memoji sticker? Let me know down below in the comment section. All right, moving on, let's talk about the next new feature. Always listen for Hey You Know Who. So normally when you set your phone down like this, face down, you cannot activate Siri using Hey You Know Who. But there is a new feature that you'll find in the accessibility settings here. If you go to Siri, always listen for a hey, you know who. So what that tells you right there, listen for, you know, when the phone is face down or covered. So even when the phone's face down, it will still respond. It will still hear you using hey, you know who. So let's go ahead and test it out. So you see I have it activated, set it face down, and I'll just say it. Hey, you know who? And there she is. So when enabling that option, even when your phone is down or covered, Siri will still respond to your request. Now here's one of my favorite new 14.3 features and I think a lot of you guys are gonna agree the toolbar at the bottom of the mail app has been remedied, it has been fixed. So no longer do you just have two buttons, delete and reply right next to each other, which made it really easy to accidentally hit the delete button. As you can see right here, this is the previous version of iOS. You see the delete button and the reply button right next to each other. Honestly, it wasn't the greatest design decision, but that's been fixed. Now they are all spread apart and you get two additional buttons back. You get your move button and you get your flag button. Of course, you can access those from the reply button, but now you get those individual buttons, which can help speed up your workflow if you use those options flag and move a lot. All right, so iCloud Drive folder sharing is finally back, thankfully. This is a feature that was revealed back at WWDC last year, but it never actually shipped to the public and it was actually removed from the beta versions as well. So it's nice to see that this is coming back in beta, which holds promise that this thing could actually ship to the public eventually. So the whole premise of this is sort of like Dropbox where you can share an entire folder with a person using only a link. You can set up permissions as well. Uh, you can quickly share using any of the little share shortcuts there like messages or mail, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna just test this out using the mail sharing option here. And I'll go ahead and just put in my email address. There we go. And now I can just ship this off with the link included and then that will easily share that particular folder with whoever the recipient is. In this case, obviously it's me. And the cool thing is that once you do share a folder within iCloud Drive, you'll see the icon change to a sharing icon. So you can see it right there for the cellular folder and you can go back in and check the sharing properties. So we'll long press and select share. All right, so you can see show people indicating that you've already shared with one or more people. All right, so you could see who's been invited. You can see the owner there. You can add additional people. You can access your share options. You can stop sharing. 
So here you can see that individual person, I can change the permission individually or outright remove access for that individual. So this is really cool. iCloud Drive still has a way to go, but it's a definite step in the right direction. And I understand that th this stuff is hard. This isn't easy to implement features like this across so many different devices and more importantly, across such a huge user base. But I'm looking forward to trying it once it does ship. Now, when VPN is disabled on previous versions of iOS, you really just don't have an indication as to when that happens because it's kind of all hidden in Control Center. Well, in iOS 13.4, now you get sort of a notification, as you can see there, in the status bar when VPN is disabled. In 13.4, you can ask Siri to go back to the home screen. Go to home screen. And there we go. Something tells me that that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as Siri is concerned for upcoming versions of iOS. Now when playing music in the music app with an extended instrumental intro, you'll notice if you go to the lyrics, you'll see a little ellipsis icon, which helps denote the fact that there is no actual song being sung yet. It's just an instrumental intro. In 13.4, you'll find a new Shazam shortcut action within the shortcuts app. So if you add an action here and you search for Shazam, there you go. There is Shazam it. So you just add the Shazam it action. <laughs> that just sounds ridiculous. You add that action. You can see it uses the microphone to identify songs that are playing in the background. So once you add that action, now you can build on it and create a shortcut based around that action. So in this case, I'm going to say get text from input. The input obviously is going to be Shazam Media. All right, so we want to do something now with the text that we got from Shazam, and I'll just use Quick Look. So it'll just pop it up on the screen once it deciphers the music playing in the background courtesy of Shazam. So I'm just going to create the shortcut name. I'll just say listen up. So I can say, hey, you know who, listen up, and it will listen for Shazam and then Give me my feedback. So I'm just going to manually invoke Siri here. Listen up. It opens shortcuts. It's running. And then you're going to see in the quick look, the current song that's playing in the background, not this song, but the song I'm actually listening to. So I see this being a very powerful action that a lot of people are going to take advantage of. Now here's something really cool. Now back in the day, one of the very first videos that I ever made for 9to5Mac was how to remap Windows keyboard modifiers on the Mac. And you can do so easily within system preferences. But here's why that's relevant to this conversation. Steve Trotton Smith uncovered in iOS 13.4 beta one, the ability to remap modifier keys on hardware keyboards. So you can remap the globe icon, caps lock, control option, command to any of these options here. And that's super exciting and super powerful, makes the iPad even that much more of a quote unquote real computer. So you'll be able to remap the caps lock key, control option, command key, and even this little globe icon right here, which will be super useful given its placement on the keyboard. But here's what this whole thing makes me think of. This report about a potentially new refresh smart keyboard with backlit keys a smart keyboard pro, if you will, to go along with the new iPad pro. I'm just saying. And that's not the only new keyboard related feature in iOS 13.4. You also get keyboard shortcuts for the photos app. So you can easily skip between your various sections within the photos tab to quickly toggle between years, months, days, and all photos. And there's even a shortcut to switch between the individual tabs at the bottom of the interface. So you can switch between photos for you, albums in search just like that with your hardware keyboard. Code was also discovered in iOS 13.4 beta one that indicates a new feature called car key is in the works. 13.4 contains references to a car key API, which will make it possible to use your iPhone or also an Apple watch to unlock, lock and start a vehicle. And users will be able to use car key in NFC compatible cars as they only need to hold the device near the vehicle to use it as a key. That sounds really promising. Some cars, of course, like Tesla do similar things already, but that sounds exciting, especially when you think of the prospect of upcoming cars that support CarPlay featuring this built in. And speaking of CarPlay in iOS 13.4, there is support for new call controls and third party navigation in CarPlay. I'm sure we'll have much more on that in the near future.
And finally, 9to5Mac's Benjamin Mayo found a new family sharing option in the TV app, which is going to be handy when sharing subscriptions to Apple TV channels. So ladies and gentlemen, tell me what's your favorite new feature in iOS 13.4. Let me know down below in the comments section. Of course, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.